Hello class. Today is another new day and it's Thursday. Our month is what? January. What's our date? If you look at the calendar behind Mrs. Pedler, you can see yesterday was the 12th. So we know today would be the 13th. If we break that number down into a one and a three, we have one group of 10 plus three more. 10, 11, 12, 13. So the one is for one group of 10 and the three is three more, 13. Thursday, January the 13th, and our year is, of course, 2022. If today is Thursday, we know that yesterday was Wednesday. <clears throat> and we know the day after Thursday will be Friday, of course. Let's put that together on our calendar. Thursday, January the 13th, 2022. Looking out my window, it's rather overcast right now, so I'm going to put the clouds in there. Still a lovely day. And if today, we said if today is Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday, and tomorrow will be Friday. Our season, of course, is winter. Well, we've been taking a look at the word righteousness this week in our, our Bible time. There's a very interesting story for you to read at home today called Balaam, Balaam and his bad reputation. You can read about Balaam and why he had a bad reputation in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verses 21 to 39. You can um, read that story at home and find out um, why Balaam had such an unfortunate adventure. The verse we've been practicing all week so far about righteousness is, who's righteous? You are righteous, O Lord, and your laws, which we read in the Bible, are right. We can always trust that whatever God says is true and right. We can trust that his word, his guidebook for us in life to help us make good decisions is true and right. God never tells us to do anything that is not good for us. We can trust him and his word. That verse, let's say it again, you are righteous, O, law, o Lord, and your laws are right. And that is found in the book of Psalms 119, verse 137. I loved seeing your memory verses last week that you sent to me on Friday. So tomorrow, we'll practice our verse one more time. And then I'd like to see you all send to me your verse tomorrow so that I can tell you've been working on it all week long. I look forward to seeing your smiling faces. Well... I've got a couple questions for you. More questions about our calendar. We said our new year is 2022. How many months, you can't see right now at the top of our chalkboard, but you know that we have balloons at the top of our chalkboard with the names of the months on them. How many balloons do we have? Or how many months are there in one year? If you said 12 months, you are correct. Let's say them together. January, February, March, and April, May, June, July, and August, September, October, November, and December. These are the months of the year. How many months in the year? 12. Let's look at our days of the week. Who can tell me how many days are in one week? You got it seven days in one week. Let's say those together. 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Good for you. Good singing and good memorizing. What's our letter this week? You've got it. The letter Q. Uppercase Q, a circle made of two curves and a little stick coming out the side. Lowercase Q, a small curve, a straight stick that looks like a nine with a hook coming out the bottom. What does the letter Q say? It's a consonant. It just says it's, um, it's sound. It doesn't say its name, right? So Q's sound is qu, qu, quack, quack. What letter can you always find beside Q at the beginning of a word? Its partner is U. Q-U says qu. That's right. And for your language assignment today, we have a Q page. It's a cut and paste page with quarters at the top. Quarters are coins that equal 25 cents. If you had 25 pennies, that would be the same as one quarter. What does a quarter equal? 25 cents. We'll talk more about money and coins at the end of the year, but for now we just know that quarter starts with Q, and that's why we have it on our language page. Qu, qu, quarter. Let's spell the word quarter together. So, if Q is with its partner, and it says qu, it will have its, the U beside it. So in the word quarter, the first two letters are Q-U. Q-U-A-R-T-E-R. -E that spells quarter. And if we spell it with our lowercase q, it's the same spelling. Q-U-A-R-T-E-R. E R quarter quarter. Well, what we really want to know is that it starts with that qu sound Q U. You can hear that at the beginning, can't you? Qu. Can you hear the er at the end? E R quarter. There we go. Well, on your worksheet. You have an uppercase Q quarter and a lowercase Q quarter. You have a spot to print your name very neatly. And underneath each quarter, you have four boxes. You need to cut out the Qs below, the uppercase Qs and the lowercase Qs. Where do you think you'll put the lowercase Qs? That's right, underneath the lowercase Q in those four boxes. There's four lowercase Q's to put in those four boxes. Now, the people who made this work worksheet did something kind of funny. Some people do not put the little hook on the bottom of the lowercase Q. But in our class, we do put that hook on. So, once you get all those lowercase Q's in the four boxes underneath the lowercase quarter, I want you to put the hook on the Q in the quarter, and the hook on each one of these Qs. Moving over to the uppercase Q quarter. What do you think you're going to do in those boxes? Of course, you're going to cut out the uppercase Qs and paste them in the four boxes underneath the uppercase Q. Easy peasy. Cut out uppercase Qs, put them below the uppercase quarter. Cut out lowercase Qs, Put them below the lowercase quarter. Don't forget to put the hook on the bottom of all those lowercase q's and write your name neatly on the line. I'm sure that you'll have no problem with that. Do your best work, please. And JK's and SK's, that's for both of you. JK's, when you're finished this sheet, you are done your math assignment. SK's, we're going to take a quick look at our math workbooks on pages 
133 and 134. Again, an easy assignment. Do you remember the scale that we talked about yesterday that looks like a teeter-totter or a seesaw? What's it called? That's right, the balance scale. And what does the balance scale weigh? It weighs which object is heavier and which object is later lighter. How do we tell? The heavier object goes down further because it weighs more, it pushes the teeter-totter down, and the lighter object goes up in the air because it's not heavy enough to push that side down. The lighter object is up in the air, the heavier object is down further. But what if they both weigh the same? If they're equally heavy or light? That's right, the teeter-totter would stay the same in the middle. The one side would not be lower or higher than the other. It would be straight across if they weighed the same. You are going to circle the object that is heavier. So, which side will you circle? The side that's down further because it's weighing that side down, it's heavier. On the back side of that page, you are going to circle the object that's lighter. So that's the opposite of the other page. Lighter is the opposite of heavier. So how will you know if it's lighter? If it is up higher. You can go ahead and complete both sides of that page now. Let's just demonstrate together how that balance scale works again. What we took a look at yesterday, there it is. Right now, we have a teddy bear on each side, so they both weigh the same. Let's switch it up. Let's put both teddy bears in one side, and we'll put a marker in the other side. What do you predict? Which side will be heavier, the marker or two bears? The two bears are heavier than the marker because, why? Because this side is lower. It is pushed this side down further and this side up in the air. So, you can go ahead and show which objects are heavier and which objects are lighter in your workbook. That shouldn't take too long. And when you're done that, um, we talked about our worksheet for JKs and SKs for language, but we have a worksheet for JKs and SKs for math as well. And it's the balance scale. One page is which is heavier. It's also a cut and paste page. We have lots of cut and paste today. So there's four objects below. You will cut them all out and put one that's heavier on the side that's down lower and one that's lighter on the side that's up higher. And then, which is lighter? Pick something that is light, it will go up in the air, and something that is heavy, it will be down here on the side that's below. Which is lighter, which is heavier? You can go ahead and do that. That is a worksheet for everybody for language, the Q quarter page. And two worksheets for everybody, heavy and light, on the balance scales. And then two pages for the SKs in your workbook. All of those pages are pretty easy and shouldn't take too long. That's our language and our math for today.
We've been talking about a little bit of science the last couple days too because we read our book um, Owl Moon on Monday and then we started studying about owls. We learned a lot of interesting facts about the owls because they're very interesting creatures. Do you remember any of them? Their heads turning all the way around, their night vision and their excellent hearing, their sharp talons. So many interesting facts about owls. One other fact about owls is that they are nocturnal. What does nocturnal mean? That means they come alive at nighttime. They wake up, they wander around, they catch their prey, and that's why they have such good vision and hearing. Well, Owls are not the only nocturnal animals, and today we're going to learn about some more night animals. This book is called Where Are the Night Animals? And it's written by Mary Ann Fraser. We can see the moon here. It is close to the earth. It's going to start rising up in the sky. And here is a wolf. A wolf is another nocturnal animal. He's howling at that moon. The summer moon rises over the hill, it's starting to go up higher as the night gets later. A lone coyote howls. There he is. It sniffs the air. Then it begins its nightly hunting route. With the coyote gone, a skunk scoots out. The skunk doesn't scoot out till he knows that coyote is gone because he does not want to be the coyote's prey or supper. Um, the skunk scoots out from its den in a log. Another skunk appears. The two romp, squeaking and squealing. But now that it's nighttime, and the coyote is gone, they're ready to have some fun, get some exercise. They don't see the harvest mice scampering along the fallen branches. But a watchful barn owl does. Do you remember the barn owl? It's got the heart-shaped disc. And if they can find a nice comfy barn, they like to roost in the hay. But this barn owl has found a spot in a tree trunk. The, the, um, the barn owl sees the falling branch and it hoots and goes back to eating a gopher. So remember those owls can eat things whole without even chewing them up. But if it, it's too big, then they they tear it apart with their sharp beak. And they get rid of the fur and the bones in a pellet. The sound of the owl start, startles a possum munching berries. She and her babies duck into the underbrush. Then cautiously she waddles to the pond for a drink. So what night owls have we talked about so far? The wolf, the coyote, the skunk, the owl, and now the possum. But the possum is the prey for a lot of animals, and they don't see all that well at night. So she has to be very cautious before she comes out with her babies to go to the pond to make sure there's no predators around. In the muddy water, a raccoon feels around for a crayfish and snails. So a raccoon comes out at night and a tree frog calls to a female tree frog. A male tree frog calls to a female tree frog and the call is correct, correct. Have you ever heard those frogs at nighttime on a beautiful summer evening? A shadow passes over the frog. A little brown bat dips and dives to snatch moths and mosquitoes from the air. So that's another very interesting 
nocturnal animal, the bat. And if, if we didn't have bats, we would have too many mosquitoes. They take care of the mosquitoes for us. Some animals are more active during the day. So the night animals are nocturnal, but the day animals are called diurnal. We are diurnal. We're awake during the day and sleep at night. Animals that are more active at night are called nocturnal. They have adapted to life in the dark. We never see most of these animals. They're hiding during the day when we are awake. And there goes the bat off to his cave for the day. The possum is scurrying along the fence to get back to her den with her babies before people come out as the sun is starting to rise in the sky. With few people around after sunset, the coyote feels safe to crawl out of its den. It yips and howls, yip, yip, yip. From far off, another coyote answers, yip, 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 yip. There's the coyote. A skunk peeps out of its den and sees a beetle. It bounds toward the insect. So the beetle is the skunk's prey. The skunk's black and white fur blends in with the dark night. So one way that skunks are made to, for nightlife is they have dark fur and they blend in at nighttime so they don't get eaten by their predators. Many night creatures are black or gray. These colors make it hard for their enemies to see them. The coyote does not see the skunk but its sensitive nose smells it. The coyote moves too close and the skunk sprays it in the face with foul smelling oily fluid. With a yipe, yip, 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 the coyote runs away. The harvest mice in the grass ignore the sharp odor. They scurry about looking for their seeds. Their whiskers and fur help them feel the way in the dark. So because they can't see very well at nighttime, they have really good whiskers and long fur to help them feel their way. Their shrill squeaks to each other are hard for humans to hear, for not for the barn owl who is wide awake and listening. Oh, do you think the mouse will get away from the barn owl? The owl swoops down from its perch. Like all barn owls, one of its ears is lower than the other. This helps the owl find the source of the squeak. So with one ear down lower, it helps it to hear close to the ground. Its extra large eyes guide its attack. The owl snatches up the mouse in its sharp claws. And then it lands on some grapevines that ramble over a fence. So the owl caught him. The opossum family is feasting on grapes. Opossums cannot run quickly to escape from their enemies, such as coyotes. So that's another reason they have to be very careful before they come out. They must look for food while under the cover of darkness. An anxious baby opossum sees the owl and tumbles from its mother's back. Oh no! It lands beside the pond, unhurt, and it climbs back up to safety. See how all the baby opossums ride on their mom's back? And they love to eat grapes. The raccoon comes to the pond every night. Many nocturnal animals are creatures of habit. They visit the same spots each night, and it makes it easier for them to travel in the dark and know how to get there because they go to the same spot every night. The raccoon snatches a crayfish from the pond, and then it dashes off with its meal through some reeds. And there he is, with those black and white stripes over his eyes. The tree frog leaps out of the reeds and lands on an oak tree. This small frog is an amphibian. Amphibians breathe through their lungs and their skin. If they were active during the day, the hot sun would dry out their skin and they wouldn't be able to breathe through it and they would die. The night air is cooler and moister. So that is why 
it's important for them to be awake at nighttime so they can have the moist, cool air for their skin to breathe through. The little brown bat darts in and out of the oak's twisted branches. Click, click, click. The bat is making noises to help it navigate and find its food. When it makes those clicking sounds, the clicking sounds bounce off of objects that are around it and make an echo back to the bat so it can hear what is around it, so it doesn't run into things. And also so it can hear when um, there's mosquitoes around or moss that it wants to eat. The bat can tell from the echoes how far away the object is that's around it. This is called echolocation. Location is where you are. An echolocation is when the bat hears an echo back from the objects that are around it, so it can tell how close those objects are. Some scientists think that bats became nocturnal to protect themselves from daytime animals. Other scientists believe that the bats hunt at night so they do not have to compete with birds for food in the daytime because there's a lot of birds flying around in the day and since bats fly too, it's easier for them to get food if they hunt for their food at nighttime when the birds are sleeping. The moon fades from the sight of, as the sun rises. Oh, we can see it's lighter, right? The moon is fading away and the sun is rising. The creatures of the night begin to seek out their dens and their burrows. The animals of the day stir from their sleep. Sunrise and sunset are nature's busiest hours. Some creatures waking up, some creatures going to sleep. A young raccoon passes a window. A child comes to the table for breakfast and the two meet. The raccoon is nocturnal and will be going to its den and the little boy is waking up to eat his breakfast and they meet as they're passing by each other. Then each goes on its own way. The night shift ends and the day shift begins. So what were some of those nocturnal animals we talked about? There was the coyote, the harvest mouse, the skunk, the barn owl, the possums, the tree frogs, the raccoons, and the bats. All very interesting creatures created by God with special qualities that allow them to thrive at nighttime or to be successful at nighttime to hunt and to move around and stay healthy. So I hope you learned a little bit more about nocturnal animals. Can you remember some? We just closed the book. The owl, the tree frog, coyote, Skunk, possum, mouse, that's right, good for you. Before we go, let's talk a little bit more about the letter Q. Q is for scraps. Now does scraps start with Q? No, scraps starts with S, but guess what you can make from scraps? It does start with Q. That's right. A quilt. A beautiful quilt made from scraps of material. When they're sewn together in squares, you can make a beautiful quilt, which is a blanket for your bed. It's artwork made into a blanket. It takes a lot of time and skill to make a quilt. So Q is for scraps tomorrow's quilt. And what, cre what um, Q word do we have in our farm alphabet book? Q is for quill. What's a quill? It's a feather that's dipped in ink used as a pen. Well, where would we find a feather? In the barnyard. A quill is a large feather. It grows in a bird's wing or tail. The quill can be used as a pen. 
Can you imagine using a feather to write with at school? We don't use them anymore, but children used to use quills to write with at school. They would have a pot of ink and they would dip the end of their feather or quill into the ink to write. And then when the ink ran out, they would dip it in again. We have pens and pencils with ink and lead that don't run out for a long time. Our pencils need to be sharpened though, don't they? So that is a quill, which also starts with Q. Q. All right, that's it for today, class. Have a wonderful afternoon and evening, and we will meet again tomorrow, which will be Friday. See you then.